Good morning. I'm thrilled to be here this morning to talk to you about how VR and AR are revolutionizing the world. But really, this is more about you and how you're revolutionizing our world by creating new technologies, new content that's being created, and even new business models that are truly changing the way that we live our lives. I want to tell you quickly about a story. Um, about a month ago, I was sitting in my living room on a Saturday watching TV. My five-year-old daughter runs in and says, Daddy, we have to go now. Pikachu is nearby. We have to go, right? A few seconds later, my three other kids ran into the room. Yes, I'm a little crazy. I have four kids. They ran in and they said, Dad, Pikachu is only going to be there for eight more minutes. We have to go now. It's the weekend, so my wife walks in. She holds up her phone and says, I have my phone. You can drive. I've been relegated to being the Pokemon Go driver on the weekends for my kids and my wife to go catch Pokemon. It's a little ridiculous, but this is really a great story on how 2016 is going to be remembered as the world, when the world discovered not only Pokemon Go, but augmented reality and virtual reality. And I think that's profound for what all of us are doing because it's opened the eyes to the masses on what this technology can do for us. So I'm going to talk to you about three things today. One is the market size, the chaos that's been created by that market size, and then a little bit about how you can win in this industry. So if we look at um, the market size, arguably VR and AR can be um, argued that it's the fourth major computing platform. There was the PC, the internet, the smartphone, and now VR and AR, which is leveraging all of it to grow faster than any of those ever have in the past. There was a time recently where people would come to me and say, oh, VR, is that a thing? Or AR, is that, is that a thing? And I think most of us in this room would agree that VR and AR is going to be everything. It's going to be weaved into the fabric of our lives. Everything that we do is going to have a little piece of this attached to it over the next decade. <clears throat> so depending upon the analyst that you are, are following, this market will be 80 to 20, $120 billion by 2020. Now if you break that down, let's think about that for a second. Within the next hour, $3.2 million will have moved into this industry. By the time you show up here tomorrow morning, $82 million will move from some other area into the VR and AR ecosystem. How much of that are you grabbing? The big 800-pound gorillas have um, entered the market. We're all aware that the likes of Facebook and Google and HTC and Sony, um, even Magic Leap, which is yet to release a product, they're valued at $4 billion. They've raised a billion dollars in funding they could also be considered an 800-pound gorilla in this ecosystem. And then there are the sleeping giants, Apple and Amazon. We all know that they're going to hit this market in a big way. We know that they've publicly announced that they're doing some things in this space. It's yet to be seen, but it's going to be massive. And then if we look at, at the ecosystem, uh, DigiCapital tells us that augmented reality is going to be about three times the size of virtual reality. However, looking at VR, $30 billion is nothing to sneeze at either. It's huge. If we look at some of the other uh, technology and computing platforms, and we look how this relates to VR and AR, we can see that the PC has roughly 20% of the world's population. The internet, 43%. Tablets, 14%. The smartphone, 35 And it's estimated that VR and AR will be touching about a billion people plus in the next two to four years. The reason, it's leveraging all of those different platforms that we already use. Over the last 12 months, roughly $2.3 billion has been invested into this uh, industry. And it covers roughly 10 different technology categories. But when you start breaking that down even further, all this money has created market chaos. There's so much going on right now, it's dizzying and it's hard to keep up with. <clears throat> So DigiCapital also put together this list of VR and AR leaders. For those of you who can count quickly, there's over 400 companies listed in the leaderboard. There's roughly an estimated 3,000 companies that have entered this marketplace in the last two years alone. Let me break that down for you. That means over 100 companies every month 
have been entering the VR and AR segment over the past couple of years. It's nearly impossible to keep up with all that's happening. By 2020, we look at 100 million head-mounted displays that will be hitting the market. Roughly 27 million of those are likely to be AR glasses. 40% of that will t likely be in the industrial uh, use case setting. And over a billion mobile devices that will have the capabilities to touch everyone around the world with VR and AR. If you try to make sense of this, you can quickly uh, pull that into three main areas of content, hardware, and software services. Now, if you're a business trying to get into this marketplace and you look at these three segments, it's dizzying trying to figure out who to use and how to use it. And then also, how do you learn from some of the other verticals that are outside of your space in terms of best practices? We've even seen recently that the lines between VR and AR are blurring. So um, at Oculus, they talked about an inside-out tracking technology, which hints that these new head-mounted head di displays are going to be um, augmented reality and virtual reality at the same time. And if we move into some of the use cases, it gets even a little more um, complicated, but it gets interesting. So if you look at like the workplace experience, um, this is a, an area that's ripe for disruption. We know Microsoft is moving into the space with HoloLens, but there are several other companies that are changing the way that we're going to interact with our, our office space. If you want to work on a mountainside, it's possible. And some of the early studies are showing you can be over 30% more effective in a VR world at your office space. If you look at like gaming and experiences, we all know that this is going to be the initial surge into VR. It's already happening. Um, the creator of Atari just recently announced a new company called Modular. And uh, it's fascinating, the types of experiences that we're going to realize. In addition to things like this, um, we're also seeing augmented reality, being able to turn your entire room into a playground, a digital play playground that interacts with the actual room um, that you're in. Journalism. If you're one of the leading journalisms, you can now take millions of people into, for example, the impoverished worlds in Africa and see where and how um, the water dilemma is affecting people. This has the opportunity to strike an emotional chord, and it could move hundreds of millions of dollars into helping people all over the world because we're now able to take them in a fully immersive experience. Mark Zuckerberg, as you probably all know, recently announced um, uh, Rooms, uh, and, and he thinks that virtual reality is going to be the most social of all platforms. Uh, he also demoed, if, as you're seeing up here, um, able to call his wife, take a selfie with her, all while playing a game with some of his friends in virtual reality. Healthcare and education. Post-traumatic stress syndrome is being treated now and tested through, through VR. It's going to have a profound effect on this entire industry, and some of the leading universities are taking notice and already testing it. <clears throat> so retail and commerce. You're going to see companies uh, allow their staff to navigate to the exact product on a shelf to do order picking, which in turn could save hundreds of millions of dollars in efficiencies of labor. All right? Shoppers are even going to be able to interact with this technology. And then there's the industrial use case. Um, it's estimated that 47% of the augmented reality glasses market is going to be in the industrial area, where hands-free um, is very important. And over the next couple of years, no one's afraid of wearing glasses that look a little weird. <clears throat> then if you look at architecture and real estate, um, this could completely change a lot of the business models. So will you and I need to call a real estate agent and ask them to go show a house? Possibly not. Our younger generation may find it just good enough to take a virtual experience uh, and actually make an offer on the house without ever stepping foot into it. Then there's education. Our kids are going to become smarter, faster, more engaged by the use of all this AR and VR technology. Film and entertainment. This is going to be massive. It, uh, it's already started. But there are a lot of questions that still lie. How do you tell a story in 360 degrees? How do you maintain the audience's um, attention? How does it stay social? Right? Is this what we're going to look like going to the movies uh, in the future? 
or are we fine just staying at home? Then there's advertising and marketing. So the San Jose Airport, for example, is testing uh, new solutions that actually change com what advertising looks like. So this video you see augmented reality uh, experiences. There's a 3D sh uh, swimming shark that's swimming over um, a restaurant. That's actually an advertisement to get your attention, to go in. These floating beers outside of the restaurant. That's an advertisement. And then indoor scanning and mapping. Um, this is an area that I know very well, um, running a company called Isle 411. And I think that this actually could be um, one of the biggest underlying uh, opportunities that exist out there. Imagine being able to have your entire world scanned with digital content overlaid on top of it, being able to access any information on any indoor space all over the world. This could lead to a transformation in billions of dollars in how advertising is done overlaid on top of your real world. So, in finishing up here, um, as a fellow entrepreneur, I asked myself about two years ago, I said, how do I win in this market? Well, I need to grow fast. I need to grow smart. I need knowledge in the industry. I need to know what's real and what's hype. And I need connections. I need to be able to connect with people like Steve here in London at a moment's notice or someone in Singapore. It doesn't matter where you exist. Um, you need all these connections to move in this fast-paced ecosystem. So uh, earlier this year, we started the VRAR Association, and we now have 15 global chapters. Um, we've announced our global executive direc director, Chris Colo, who's here in the audience today. And so what I'd like to do in finishing is, is show you just a quick uh, two-minute video on kind of what we're doing and, and helping the ecosystem and helping you to try to win in this industry. Thanks for coming out here to GoPro's first VR meetup. Believe it or not, we this is our first time doing this and really excited to do it for the VR Air Association. We're over at the MIT Virtual Reality Hackathon. I want to thank the VRAR Association for promoting our sponsorship at this event and creating additional visibility and traffic to our project. Thank you very much, VRAR Association. When you think about the opportunities that exist with creating the, a space, an environment for people to immerse themselves in. It's not just novelty, you know, there's really intrinsic, interesting storytelling opportunities here. Whether they choose to put it in their pocket or not, ultimately I believe it's going to be on millions, tens of millions of devices that happen to be in their pockets and all they got to do is download an app and suddenly they're using it without even having made a conscious decision to use it. Put the temperature correctly on my floor, play the music that I like waking up to, dispense the food for my dogs that are always super hungry all the time even though I feed them. And what I do is make connections and how I do it is by creating original branded content and driving marketing initiatives. So the opportunity to kind of uh, create spaces on spaces using the combination of virtual reality and augmented reality takes on a whole new level when you think of it as much bigger than just, okay, we're just going to stream a game. So with Google, our view is that you know we want to really make this as ubiquitous and sort of natural as you know, other technologies with living your device today like GPS. It does amazing things, but you don't even know it's there. It's in the background. So in closing, I think this is the most exciting time to be alive. We have the opportunity, you and I, to revolutionize the world. Thanks for having me today, and I hope you have a wonderful show. Thank you, Nathan. Uh, we might have time for a couple of quick questions. Has anybody got any questions? I mean, that's a big sort of uh, opener. I think you covered everything there. Uh, it just shows you how big everything is. And uh, all I'd have to say is really, if you're serious about AR or VR, you've got to become part of the association because that's really going to help move everything forward. So is there any questions for Nathan? 
No, I can't see anybody. Oh, one over there. Yes, sir. Oh, so we're trying to get a mic to you, sir. Um, how do you join? <laughs> see Chris Colo up here on the front row. <laughs> yes. And also, it's we, easy, have, we have a stand here, uh, yeah. stand E2, uh, that's out towards the, uh, the front of the, the exhibition. So come and see us there, and we can sign you up. And uh, Chris and Nathan will be there, and also my team from London will also be on the stand. Right, thank you, Nathan. I think that's, uh, that's great. Thank you so right. much. Thank you.